Right, so this is a follow on. Uh, if you enjoyed the intro, you can see a little bit of what I do. Uh, give us a subscribe now and uh, you'll get more of it. So this is a bit of a follow on from the previous video, which is the fabrication of the frame and the extending of the chassis of the Sankey. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we've got some alumin aluminium composite board. Okay, this is three mil. It's plastic in the middle and it's aluminium on the outside. The reason I like this over just aluminium is you run up a tree with just aluminium and it leaves a good dint in it like the side of the vehicle, uh, whereas this is a little bit more forgiving and it's getting more and more available and cheaper and cheaper uh, as time goes on from the first one of these trailers that I built about five years ago, maybe a bit more. Um, I've done a couple more since and they are lasting well, okay? So let's crack on. So what I've done here, I've just marked where the... Um supports are going across the roof and I've drilled in I've dropped a rivet in but I haven't wound it down yet um, I've done that on both sides which stops the whole thing from moving at all and then what I can do is I can drill all the other ones in place so I know where they're going to go then we're going to lift this sheet off we're going to put the adhesive in because these days adhesive does more than the mechanical kind of uh, fixings then we're going to drop it back down rivet it down that's going to pull it all tight We'll tidy up all the gunk and we're, there we go. Right, so I'm using a product called Fix All. Okay, uh, using this over something like a silicon, because silicons, they're good, but they're not perfect. Um, they do degrade over time, depending on what you get. There's different qualities. This stuff here, it says it doesn't weatherproof. Uh, sorry, it doesn't. It's waterproof, it's weatherproof, it doesn't attack other substances, it's non-staining, it's for all conditions, all materials, um, it's odourless. Yeah, you can do your own research, but this is what I'm using for this. Um, I'll do some basic sealing with some silicates later on, but for something where I want it to grab hold of and really adhere, this is what I'm going to use for that, okay? drilled it all all the way around I know this is squared before I even start because it's it's locking it in position that way now I've got a little bit of time before this seals but I can lift it up I can go around and get it all drop it down jobs are good and give it half an hour or so um, just so it starts to bite it starts to bond and I'm gonna clamp it down which then just puts that it doesn't squish it all out of the way before it's set if that makes sense that's my take on it anyway So what I've just done there, it's a little bit excessive, but in my mind, if this cuts down on vibration and potential water ingress, if it did manage to find its way in over time, what I've done is I've put the roof on. As you can see, I've, I've gone around the whole thing with silicon, dropped it on, then I've clamped it down. I've then gone on the inside, um, everywhere where the steel, um, the painted steel to this material, I've then beaded all the way around and made it all nice and tight. That way, you've got that extra bond on every single surface. Uh, if water did ever find its way in, because bear in mind, this is made for off-road use. So, over thousands of miles of vibrations, things, things stretch. This, this is why you can't make these out of wood with screws, because over time, any kind of off-road rocking, you watch anything, there is play, there is leverage, it will, you imagine putting a screw through two pieces of wood, and at the far ends of the two pieces of wood, just flexing it like that over and over again, it does make things come apart, it does let water in over time, so that's the theory.
Right, it's so day two. Um, I only got yesterday afternoon on the job, uh, spent the first part of the day running around, but today what we're doing is, um, see them wheel arches in the back, um, Stu's asked me if I can just taper them in a little bit so the bed ends up bigger, so we're cutting them out and making a new wheel arch. So uh, for this, just to give you an idea, these tubes are about a tenner each, this is the third tube and I've only put this many panels on, so don't think you're going to do this on the cheap. kind of thing these battery power multi-tools are invaluable um, purely because like I get all these sheets cut to size and everything just to save my time and do nice neat cuts but like where you've got this angle um, you don't want to kind of cut that put it in place and it's out with the multi-tool you can go butt up to it and cut it off flush so you know it is absolutely barb on And how easy is that? That's the same as the roof, all I'm doing is way over the top but I'd rather do it now than if I had an issue. So that's all glued and sealed on that side of the uh, 20 by 20 it's pushed up against it, it's riveted, and I'm gonna go both sides of every single piece of box section and just make sure that you get a good bit of um, the sealant glue on there, rub it down with a finger, that way it bonds to not only the composite, but it does to the box section as well, which is just another layer of just holding it all together, isn't it? So what we're doing now, um, because what we're getting to the point on the build where we're going to start enclosing it all in, it's hard to get materials in through little doors. So what I tend to do is leave one or two sides off and it gives you room to get in, get out, all the rest of it. So what we're going to do is the start with the rear wall, then the side wall, then the ceiling, then the floor, then I'm going to go get some wood and then we'll enclose that in. Uh, once we've got the bulk of the materials in there, we'll put the final two walls on uh, with all the materials inside and then fit them. So yeah, in insulation now. This is commonly known as Kingspan. Uh, this is a different brand. It's just what they had at the Builders Merchants. Um, it's, uh, I wanted 20 mil, but this is 25. It's neither in nor there. Uh, it just means that there's a slight bit off the box section which is going to get its own little piece of insulation in there anyway to stop the thermal transfer and condensation okay so let's cut this out and get it stuck in there dead easy to cut uh, a lot of people use like a, um, a bread knife carving knife that kind of thing i just use a stanley you get used to it or if you're an america fox cutter Okay, what I tend to do as well, on the measurements, I leave it a couple of millimetres too big, then whack it in, what it does is it forms to the edges, keeps everything nice and taut. Okay, once you've cut through, snap it, and you're just going to place the knife just inside. Like I said, if you've got the bread knife, it goes all the way through, but we use what we've got, don't we? So. No messing about on this build because we're uh, I'm actually on the clock because this is a paid job for someone else. And what 
this gives you, because you're doing slightly too big, what I'll then do is make sure it's butt up at this side, and then that little bit extra you've got, you can just get the knife in the back of it, and by doing that, you could measure it exact, but then what I found, if you measure it exact and put it on, it always wants to fall off while the glue's adhering and things like that. I used it a fraction oversize, whack it in, and it, it, it almost like dints this bit. I cut up to it and push it in, and it just holds itself in there nice and tight, which if it's in there nice and tight and you've got a bit of glue behind it, that's going nowhere and it's gonna, you know, it's really gonna stick well. And what we're going to do once this is done, once it's all in everywhere, before we board, we're going to go around with the uh, expanding foam. Any little gaps, anything like that, any of this metal work here, you get like a thermal transfer. And what happens is the shoe caps are gets freezing cold. That's physically attached to this metal piece, which transfers the cold through onto this side, which makes a bit of moisture. So what we'll do is um, we'll probably either a bit of expanding foam over or a bit of thermal tape, something like that. And then when we put the wood on, you don't get that transfer of condensation. It's not a major issue because with these, um, I tend to velt trim everything anyway, but you know, it takes nothing to do, so we do it. And um, there's no point in me showing you the entire thing because I mean, you get the gist of that. You cut the boards out, you stick them in the holes. We do it for there, we do it for there. We do it for all these sections here. We do it for the whole bottom here. When that's done, we'll put this wall on. We'll do that one. I'll leave this because because this is going to stew, and stew's a boot neck and he abuses things, it's built stew strong. So there is extra bracings in everywhere um, with the intentions of him tipping this on its side in a sand dune or rattling the thing off of a tree. So it just makes it that little bit harder to get materials. The last one I built, you could just walk in and out through certain sections of it. Because I had the cross bracing in, but I didn't make it stew strong. And stew strong is, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, we'll get that, get everything on, bar that end wall. With any luck, the um, teardrop door is due today. Hopefully that'll come today and I can put that in so that I can get in and out through there. And it's not so much of a faff, but happy days. There we go, we've insulated all the way around now, all the ceiling's done. We're leaving that panel out there because that's the one that's gonna have the door in. So there's no point insulating that to cut it back out again. So what we'll do, we'll fit the door, cut it all out, and then just insulate around it because the door's insulated itself. Uh, I'm not gonna do the floor just yet because I'm in and out and in and out and I don't want to crush it. So the insulation will go in just here uh, when the wood's all cut, ready to go. And I'll put the insulation down, glue it, uh, and then we'll put the wood on top of it and attach it all in place. Right, what I'm going to do now is, because I've got a strut here, a strut here, 
in, case, in case I'm missing, what I do is I go to the inside. I drill through both pieces, the both walls of the box section, which pops it out here. I can jump around to this side, pop the rivets in, straight on. Another good reason to put plenty of rivets in is when this is all coated and done it's good to know where all the struts are because if you want to mount something like an unwind rail, a drop down table, um, some sort of unit, you know where the uh, supports are so you can seal it, drill in, you know, do what you need to do. Right, I've got a funny feeling this might be a bit tight because I measured it and I only put a mill on the other side, so we'll see. Push. Beautiful. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to take this back out. I'm going to put loads of sealant all the way around here. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to pre-do is I'm going to put a couple of rivets in. I know you don't need it with the glue. Belt and braces, it's going off-road. So I'm going to put a couple of um, holes in here ready for the rivets. I'll glue it all up, put it back in. Hey. Yeah. The uh, door in here. Get it all insulated out. What we're going to do next is uh, I'm going to paint these two arches because these are new. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go get some plywood. We're going to plywood the ceiling. We're going to plywood that end wall. Insulate that arch. Insulate that arch. Plywood that wall. Um, then we're going to get the, the flooring and everything. Once that's done, we'll cut all the pieces, chuck them all in, put this end wall on, and then we can fit them back to it. And then pretty much we're sealed. Then all it's a case of doing is going round and putting the, the trim on everywhere. 